Hello everybody, my name is Matt Suki and welcome to the first podcast, I guess, on my main channel. Today I'm joined with my friend, it's, uh, uh, uh like some rice? Yes, like some rice. And he does like some rice. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about the Modern Warfare 3 campaign and a lot of it's like, uh, criticisms, I guess maybe hate or something? I'm not really sure, but I guess we'll dive into that now, huh? Yeah, um, so for the people in my chat, hello, uh, yeah. I will kind of uh, basically just restate what Matsuki did. Uh, <laughs> Let's so go. I, uh, I, Dink Memer and Person Man Guy, thank you for stopping by. I just finished the Modern Warfare 3 campaign. And uh, to be honest, it wasn't bad, like, at all. As you probably have seen, a lot of the people, uh, like, reviewing it are giving it, like, fours, threes, twos, like, yeah or maybe not too so i don't know if i saw anything that low but i i i thought it was funny though so you know the worst games that came out this year matsuki like the golem game and the kong oh game? i, I yeah. haven't seen the kong game but i saw the golem game <laughs> Oof. yes so the golem game got scored the exact same score as the modern warfare 3 campaign by ign oh come on <laughs> no way yeah let let that sink in so they gave it a four I can't even yeah, trust IGN. <laughs> like, that's insane. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I think I think there are valid criticisms one can have with the campaign. But I, I when I was reading through their review, I struggled to understand the problems. <laughs> mm, okay. Um. But yeah, I uh, so like, you know, first blush. I mean, what did you think of the campaign? Well, uh, I would probably give it like a solid 8 out of 10. Like, I, <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I'm not really sure why like i haven't seen too many reviews myself on why people don't like the campaign yet i've, I've watched like merc music sort of review of it on it and like the thumbnail and whatever kind of made it sound a little negative i guess but his review overall was pretty balanced it wasn't really like a extremely good campaign or an extremely bad one to him but for, for the majority of the i guess backlash i guess it, it just seems negative oh hello grav uh gravity just stopped by uh hello um, I so, will make sure he asked if he should be here if he doesn't want any spoilers. I will make sure that if ooh. I or Matsuki am about to give any kind of spoiler like talk, we will give a big spoiler warning uh, before we say any spoiler ish things. Does that sound fair? Yeah. Should we should we just try to do non spoilery at, at the start and yeah. maybe dive into spoilers like later? Yeah. I yeah I'm I'm good with that. Why don't we? <laughs> he says appreciate that boo. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I am totally fine with that. Um, Dink Memer asks, how bad is the campaign scale of 1 to 10? Um, I mean, if we're going backwards, I would say it's <laughs> only a 2 out of 10 being bad. <laughs> oh, so you also I, give it an 8 out of 10 for good. <laughs> I, I would say, yeah, I mean, I'm very much in this similar mindset to you. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Grav says Rice and Matsuki crossover wasn't on his bingo card, but... Yeah, <laughs> I'm here, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing I think that stuck out to me that was weird is a lot of people calling it a short campaign. I oh, agree yeah. that it's short, but also isn't every Call of Duty campaign short? Like, I'm, I'm a, I will give you a little bit of background, like Call of Duty wise for me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I played Modern Warfare 2 back in the day, so 2009. That was like the first Call of Duty I played. And then the last time I got into Call of Duty was Modern Warfare 2019. And I've kind of been keeping up with them since that one. Oh, okay. Um, so like, I'm very, <laughs> I'm very strange with my, uh, with my Call of Duty like critiques. Work. But I know a lot about all the campaigns. I know about the characters and everything. And Modern Warfare for me has always been my favorite story, like out of all the Call of Duties. Mm -hmm. um but from my understanding all of the call of duty campaigns are short like i don't think there's really a long call of duty campaign is there Ooh, uh like what's the longest one would it be like six i feel hours? like yeah probably around probably eight maybe nine okay and i'm assuming that's probably a black ops game right I'm feeling it's either Black Ops 2 or Infinite Warfare because they all have like the side missions that aren't like required to play, but if you do them, it's going to be longer. Yeah, I would say for me, so I played about uh, a little over half of this campaign last night, and I want to say that it probably 
I played about three hours last night, and then I played about two hours to, or today. So it probably took me maybe five hours to beat this campaign, mm -hmm. I would say. Me personally, it so, took, like, yeah. I, I live streamed it all, right? Um, mm -hmm. My first live stream, we had three hours and 15 minutes. My second one, another three hours and 15 minutes. So about six hours and 30 minutes total for me. And I played on <laughs> hardened difficulty, so it, it wasn't like oh, a okay. breeze to go through. But it is. I, yeah. I want it to be a little challenging. Yeah, I played it on regular, I believe. Um, I mm -hmm. I considered playing it on Hardened because I think I played Modern Warfare 2's campaign on Hardened, mm -hmm. but I kind of wanted to um, I wanted to address a couple criticisms that we'll we'll discuss a little later. Um, so I tried uh, I tried regular first, and uh, yeah, it was a really great experience. I thought that's good. I thought there yeah. was a a lot to do in the open combat missions that other Call of Duty campaigns just like don't have. <laughs> Like yeah, so should we should we address those? Because I feel like a lot of the criticisms or a lot of the reviews that I've seen, a lot of them have just been calling like the game one big uh, war zone mission, and I think that's really doing it an injustice personally. Because there's only like what three missions that are really like that, three or four, I think. Yeah, I don't really think the open combat missions are like really inflating the game that much unless you're just like trying to speed run it and there's only like i think i think it was four or five like they were actually open combat like some of them you can maybe sway to be open combat but like other call of duty campaigns have had like open levels sort of like that too um yeah like modern warfare 2 last year had um that i mean it had the one mission where you're like on the island as... in the ghillie yes. seats yeah Oh yeah, yeah, I even forgot about that. I forgot that that was kind of open. So there was that mission, mm -hmm. and then there was the one where you're kind of like scrounging for, um, you're kind of scrounging to like get your weapons and things like that, and uh, yeah. Oh, the all, I, uh, all alone mission with soap, I think, right? Yes, uh, with, with ghosts kind of being um, in your ear and yes. him kind of like, yes, I, I okay. enjoyed that mission quite a bit, but um, yeah, I just, I was really confused by, like, everybody being like, oh, this is just one big Warzone prep. And I'm like, I mean, not really, because, like, it has a lot of traditional, like, Call of Duty missions. Mm hmm and each one was, like, uh, I would say different enough to be memorable. Like, I could differentiate uh, each one individually and tell you what it's about. Uh, 100%. It it's not like every one of them is to go from go from point A to point B to complete the mission. You actually have to do stuff on them too and scavenge around like you kind of mentioned in that soap mission. Um, you're not really yeah. crafting stuff, but you are still scavenging for stuff in chests and crates to, uh, I guess, unlock new areas. Uh, if you want to zip line, you need that, that grappling hook sort of thing. Yes. Um, I also realized too that in order to... Um... I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, Modern Warfare 3 beta gameplay on in the background here so people can actually watch something while I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so BG says he heard the campaign was awful. I mean, yeah, that seems to be the general consensus, but, like, the thing is, I don't know how many of the people saying it's awful have actually played it. Like, mm -hmm. that that's the part that I'm curious about because the reviewers say it's awful, but, I mean, every review I've read seems to kind of be missing the mark a little bit um they they seem to be a little disingenuous because um like good example is one review so i used to watch uh griffin gaming and he oh, put yeah. out a review for the campaign and he's a huge call of duty fan so i was like oh okay well he probably liked it and he actually hated it which i was like really like i'm surprised he hated it but he wow. said that he there was only like an hour of gameplay, and I'm like, not at all. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, he's like, oh, it's like two thirds cutscenes in like an hour of gameplay, and I'm like, not at all, man. Like, did we play the same game? Yeah, that just feels incredibly disingenuous. Like, yeah, and so I will say, I actually personally liked this campaign better than last year's campaign. I didn't dislike last year's campaign. But I certainly understood people's, like, complaints saying that it felt a little slow. I personally think it was just deliberately paced. Like, I think it was supposed to be more, um, what's the word? Like, tactical? Like, maybe more espionage focused? Um, I guess so. I mean, I kind of personally got that feeling. 
But, like, this is very much like, hey, we finally have Makarov. Like, now is the time that we're going to give you, like, you know, the giant grand, like, fight with him. Yeah, now's his time to shine and get into the action and start setting up some, like, world threats for us. Yeah, and I mean, their version, I won't spoil it here, but their version of No Russian, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very, uh, it's very real. Lives um, up to the original, way, I think. <laughs> I, I thought so too. Like, when I was watching it, I was like, this is horrifying because this feels pretty real, honestly. Yeah, pretty scary <laughs> to be in the shoes of who you're, the person you're playing as. Um, obviously, I won't dive into it, but yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. No, we'll, we'll, we'll keep all spoilers free. If uh, anybody in the chat would like to also keep spoilers free. That'd be great. Um, I was also wanting to ask you, like, what did you think of, like, I guess MDV19's campaign and MDV2's in comparison? Like, wh what would you rate those two campaigns? So 2019, I liked a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really thought it was a good switch up from what the originals did, um, especially because you know, 20, or sorry, uh, Modern Warfare 2 was so focused on, um, you know, Makarov, and then same with Modern Warfare 3, and I liked the, the setting change to some extent. I mean, obviously, we still have some similar settings, but I thought Far like, Farah, Farah, however you say her name, I, I liked her story a lot, mm -hmm. um, and her brother, I thought, was a really cool villain. Yeah, Hidir, um, he, he was set up pretty well in MDiv 19. I, I liked him he there. He was, um, and I liked the focus on the more like like let's work together with the east rather than like focus on them as the enemy mm -hmm. um i liked that a lot uh and then so the way that they like focused on a whole different um theme in two i was like kind of surprised because i was like oh are we not gonna like are we gonna have this as a whole different um you know are we gonna have this as like a whole different story is each game gonna be its own different story like it's not gonna connect yeah um, because i thought i thought this like wrapped more closely to the first game yeah i, I kind of agree there too this one mw3's felt more grounded and almost real like uh, mw2's like it almost felt more action movie like i guess you could say um like the vibe the whole yeah. vibe of it is different from 2019. like this is gonna sound like a weird comparison but mw2 for me almost felt like a james bond uh I, I like I, I it's a weird <laughs> comparison I know but like mm -hmm. I feel like when I think of the missions like I think about that one mission where you have to like I <laughs> I don't remember what it is you stab at him but like there's like a pen that you have to stab that dude with um like the little epi looking pen oh uh, yeah, yeah 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 in the yeah. the mission in the in the what, what what place was that again somewhere in Europe oh uh, yeah somewhere in Europe it's like uh like not Stalingrad um but like one of those like European towns Mm -hmm. but uh yeah no it's, that was so it's a weird just, mission it was like <laughs> yeah it's like a lot of like weird like espionage like we're gonna sneak around and then oh there's a betrayal and it kind of felt like the betrayal was because modern warfare 2 had a betrayal that we have to have the betrayal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i thought modern warfare 3 felt more like i didn't feel like it um was trying to subvert my expectations like everything else these days is and i appreciated that Mm -hmm. you know yeah like i felt like it was like hey like we know we know you want makarov and we know you want a big like terrorist attack from him and you want to play some really cool missions and we're also going to throw in a couple things that feel like warzone and that's the campaign yeah i, I think the the smaller development time also like put some uh, constraints on what they could make so i, I found it kind of understandable yeah. that they could have some warzone sections of the map in the campaign my only like uh hopes i guess for like if they ever want to do this again is to always make the campaign first and put warzone secondary on there like don't just take a warzone location and put it into the campaign rather make the campaign level and then put that into warzone on the same map absolutely and i feel like I, they did think, do that here yeah i definitely agree i think one thing that i was confused by is a lot of reviews were saying that it felt boring um which yeah I, I don't i don't really understand because a lot of the normal call of duty missions felt very um on the rails it felt very like yeah it felt like it Linear. Felt as on rails like <laughs> um 
I'll say the words Verdansk. I won't say what happens in Verdansk, but uh, it's very much like a traditional Call of Duty mission, and it's very action-packed. Yes. Yeah. I don't know how you could play that mission and be bored at all. Like, Story-wise, gameplay-wise, it was good. <laughs> yeah. The opening mission had my attention, like, immediately. Um, With the like, gulag? I remember... Uh, yeah, oh. the gulag. Okay, uh, yeah. There was a part... Uh, in, so, I, I will say, I didn't realize what was happening until close to the end of that... Or close to the, the strong point in that mission. Yeah, same. And then when I, when I realized what was happening, I was like, Oh, this is very cool. Like... I, I just took me by surprise and I I really liked the different perspectives that the campaign offers. Yeah, it was like, it, like, oh shit, I'm that kinda I'm on this team. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Cause like like you don't get to play like from different like a lot of different perspectives a lot of the time in some mm -hmm. Call of Duty campaigns. And so, like, when they switch it up and they make it, like, so you don't know, like, that's great. Yeah. I thought that part was awesome. I really thought it was going to kind of be, like, the original MW2, I believe, where you get to free Captain Price from the Gulag, right? And maybe mm -hmm. explain it later on, but, like, yeah, that, that, subver that subverted my expectations. Yes. And, then, like, that's the type of stuff where, I like, I thought they did it smart because yes. they were, like, we're going to subvert your expectations, but we're doing it in a way that's very classic. Mm -hmm. And it's very, like, I don't know. It's, like, what I would expect from, like, an old-school Call of Duty campaign to some extent. And it, was, um, it wasn't, it was like, dun-dun-dun. It was more like, oh, yeah, I, I realize what we're doing now. Yeah, it was real subtle. Like, it, because, like, when, when you realize what's happening, it wasn't like, isn't this crazy? It was yeah. like, oh, oh. <laughs> it all makes sense it now. Just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, it was smooth. Yeah. It, it was played off well, and it... I, I was really intrigued. Um, I also thought that this narrative had better pacing than last year's. Um, yeah. So like, like it, last year, it was good. It wasn't bad, but I definitely felt like there was less downtime in in this one. Mm -hmm. If I could get into the into I guess my comparison with MW19, MD2, and MW3 first, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So MW19 for me though, like I thought it was a. Uh, I thought the story was pretty good, I, but the gameplay, I felt like it um, wasn't the most interesting. Like, you had some really good missions, like, say, Clean House, where you're going, like, up the up the apartments. Um, Clean House was a big standout. Yeah, and I think it was you had night vision on that map, too, right? Uh -huh. And each room was, like, filled with a different sort of, like, enemies or obstacles. Um, that was a really good mission, but then you had other missions that I thought stretched out too long or were a little bit boring. Maybe like the uh, the Road of Death mission, I guess. That one I think stretched out too long. Um, it was the one where you're yeah. like a sniper. and yeah, uh, Yes, I know exactly which one you're talking about. Yeah, some of those yeah. um, later ones felt a little little long in the tooth. Yeah, so sure. overall I think I'd give M MW19 like a nice 7 out of 10. Like story probably an 8, gameplay maybe a 6. So it rounds up to 7. MW2, though, uh, I didn't like how it connected to MW19, and I did kind of, like, appreciate how they, like, they went for that sort of new um, action movie sort of, uh, what do you call that, um, pacing, maybe, or yeah. feel yeah, to it? Yeah, that more, um... Maybe classic Call of Duty feel? I'm not sure how to explain it. Yeah, it was, it was very, um, it just felt really different, I thought. Yeah, tonally, it was just too different so i mean it, it didn't like affect me in my rating too much of that game in a contained sort of bubble but overall it, i just think it goes down a little bit because it didn't follow the same sort of tone as mw19 the missions though they were super fun i thought in mw2s the story though is what i think makes the downfall of Modern Warfare 2's campaign and i would give it a 7 out of 10 as well because i think <laughs> in this one uh, mw2 the uh, it's like the opposite of MW19. The story is a 6, but the gameplay is like an 8. <laughs> yeah. I thought the gameplay was definitely a step up, but like, yeah, I would agree. The story felt lacking. It had um, a lot of I plot liked... holes, I thought. Yes, yes. I liked the characters of Graves and... Um, oh, yeah. Uh, what's the other... Uh, Valeria? Not... Maybe? Uh, yeah, what's the... Alejandro? Uh... Yes, thank you. Alejandro. Um, I liked those two characters a lot. Mm -hmm. Um... 
but I just thought that there were, like, I don't know, I, I was so kind of confused by, like, how they were brought into the game. Like, there wasn't, like, they, I didn't think their introduction was as good as it could have been. Uh, introduction-wise, I was more disappointed with Soap's introduction in MW2. That's fair. I, yeah. I think, I think Soap in the original series, he got, like, he got that classic sort of, what kind of name is Soap sort of introduction, right? They yeah. kind of shoehorned that in there. I forget who said it, but it didn't have the same impact. And also, you didn't have the introduction of Soap. Gaz was kind of the new Soap of this trilogy. Yes, most so, definitely. So yeah, um, when a lot of people complain about, I guess, uh, I won't say any spoilers, but when people complain about Soap in MW3, I think it's more of a problem with mw 2 Soap. More so that because we didn't like bond with him as much in that game. And I think yeah. that negatively affected the next game, but... MW3 did the best with what it had, I thought. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree. I mean, and I like a lot of the dialogue back and forth between Soap and uh, Ghost. Ghost. Yeah. Yes. Like, I mean, I, I really appreciated that their um, banter in that one mission kind of carries over into this game a little bit. Like, it kind of felt like that mission bonded them, and so it really made them closer, like, mm -hmm. as teammates. And I, I don't know, I just thought that that really showed through. And I was like, oh, that's a really cool attention to detail. Yeah, it wasn't like there was no substance at all, but I do feel like it could have been a little bit better. Um, I, I did like that he did bond at least with the team, the task force, yes. one for one. Yes, there there was definitely a camaraderie. And I liked the whole, like, setup of, like, hey, it's very clear that one for one is very tight-knit and, you know, they're ride or die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're very, very much for each other. They're tight with each other. I was going to say too real quick to my chat, if any of you guys have any questions, do feel free to uh, start asking them. And then when we get to a point, uh, I will go ahead and we can kind of open it up to uh, answering yeah. uh, any questions you guys might have. I'd be so down for that. <laughs> as uh, far as the, uh, the open world mission structure, how do you think they handled that? Because I think that that's the one thing that I feel I've heard a lot of people like talking badly about, but I didn't think it was like badly handled. Maybe I could understand maybe mediocrely handled, but I wouldn't say bad. Yeah, not definitely not bad. Um, if we want to go through the missions one by one, we could easily do that. Like the first one uh, is actually in the campaign is with Farah, I believe, uh, yeah. where you're in the shipping bay or the loading docks, whatever you want to call it. Yep. There's a and lot of like verticality, the there's like parachute yeah. equipment you can find. Um, I, I thought there was a lot to do on that map. Um, but yeah, though, I think the one, the mission with Farah, I thought was really, really good because they introduce it pretty well. Yeah. Like mapping everything out. It kind of reminded me, did you ever play Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes? Sorry, no, I haven't. No, sorry. <laughs> okay. So it really reminded me of that. Mm-hmm where it's like really going for the whole like here is a small well a big area but it's like you know focused and you can um you know you can basically tackle this in any order you want um like you have an objective but you can go about it however you want and i like the fact that the ai um allows itself to um like you can hide basically like yeah, you could actually, like, like, get back into into stealth mode after you've engaged yeah. in combat, which is a problem in the previous two MW games. Yeah, that's one of my biggest things, is, like, once you've gone loud, you can't really go stealthy again. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that they were able to do that, I thought was great. I was like, oh, finally. Like, <laughs> like the fact that there's actually an indicator for it, and the fact that you can actually, like, you know, run away and hide again. Um, not like a Batman Arkham, but I mean, I guess for lack of a better comparison, that was kind of what it reminded me of. Like, oh, like I swung from a couple of gargoyles and or I climbed up a couple shipping containers and now I can <laughs> you can't see me anymore now. Like, that's that's cool that we finally have that. Mm -hmm. I, I also think that they introduced it very well too. like the, the all the clues that they gave you to like just to work with, like your mini map turns yellow, I guess, like to more explain these mechanics like. Uh, the minimap will turn yellow if you're suspicious, and it'll turn red once you've been detected and the enemies are engaged in combat with you. Uh, yeah. 
I thought that was a clever way of doing it too to like not rip off Far Cry. Like a as a big Far Cry fan, um I was kind of happy to see that Call of Duty was like, yeah, we're not going to like we're not going to just copy and paste the same HUD for Far Cry <laughs> and make <laughs> yeah. it exactly like that. I was like, "Oh, it's like mini map based." I was like, "That's kind of cool because then it doesn't like mess with the vision of you actually fighting anybody." Um and it allows like I don't know the immersion to some extent like to stay and i just i don't know i really appreciated that yeah uh, the only game that i've played i guess it's kind of similar would have been would have been like uh ghost recon wildlands and breakpoint but yeah, that's a good comparison another thing like to do with the open combat missions like something unique to them was the whole weapon crates that are basically the same as intel that you could find in the old mw trilogy in those campaigns yeah I was also surprised too to see that like not only did they offer like loadouts, but they offered um, the kill streaks and they offered mm -hmm. like a lot of the uh, upgrades and things that you would get in those. I was kind of surprised by that, but I was like, oh, that's actually that's actually really helpful because like if you're gonna take on you know this massive amount of enemies, it makes sense that you would have a little backup and then you're not just a one man army because. You know, realistically yeah. in the story, like, it would be obviously, you know, with Call of Duty, it kind of feels like you're a one-man army, but this, like, really grounds it, I thought. Mm -hmm. I think rarely did they actually send you in, like, unprepared. I, I think Far's mission would have been the most unprepared, like, realistically, because she got, like, ambushed, right? <laughs> yes. One thing I thought was strange is I heard, um, so going back to the Griffin thing, Griffin mm -hmm. was like, oh yeah, in none of these missions do they give you any kind of weapons that are, like, uh, significant for the mission that you're in. And I was like, I would disagree with that because, like, every mission you start off with something that would be ideal, mm -hmm. but if you want to, you can obviously switch things up. And it kind of encourages you to switch things up as the missions go on, which was a little bit different, I thought. I think on the uh, the second open world mission, actually, you could like, if you timed it right, you could pull your parachute early because, well, this one is like the only mission where you actually come in with a parachute into the open world level. Uh, you time your parachute right, you can land on top of the crane and you can find a sniper rifle up there. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you did that, but I did that and it, it was pretty fun. <laughs> I think it was Evictus or something, but yeah, there was you could just pick people few... off. And you yeah, can play there was totally a few different times where like you could you could totally find you could totally find weapons if you like looked around enough. Mm -hmm. And on the and, uh, yeah. wait, the the resort I guess island uh, mission, I found a minigun on that island. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait wait wait, uh, is that the one with the cabanas? It had a it, it's the mission that had uh, you trying to get Melina. Yes. That one. Uh, the reason I was thinking of the cabanas, so I don't know if you got this part of dialogue, but there was a really funny part of dialogue. Oh. Where, um, <laughs> it, where it like, uh, if you go into one of those little cabanas, Soap goes, he's like, what the hell do you call these? And G Ghost is like, he's like, I believe those are called cabanas, Soap. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, okay. And then he's like, he makes some joke about cabanas. And then mm -hmm. what's funny is after he knows that they're called cabanas, if you go into another one, he goes, I'm entering the cabana. And I'm like, that's really cool. Like, oh, cool. <laughs> That's yeah. such a cool attention to detail. I noticed on that mission too, if you like aim at the large ship, they're like, that's a fucking big boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then like, if you, did you climb on any of the boats at all? Like any of the little... Oh yeah, uh, I did, I did. And they're like, yeah. stop playing around in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Price was like, get off the fucking boat. So he's like, we don't have time for this shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was great. I love that. And um, there's like one of the garages in the back where you can find a, what was it? There's like a whole bunch of cars there, like fancy cars, like VO2 style oh, almost. Oh yeah, and he's like, holy crap, you gotta see this garage. <laughs> yeah, look at all these rides. Like, yeah, I was yeah. like, man, the dialogue is so good. I was like, it's so cool that they like actually like thought to put so much detail in all this, especially yeah. when it seemed like people just wouldn't care, but like, it, it, there's so many instances like that that I was like, oh, this is really, like, really good, surprisingly. And in that fancy garage, you could find a, a gold weapon in the weapon chest in there. Yeah! Oh, yeah, did you find the uh, the Akimbo uh, pistols, too? Oh, I did, yeah. I also yeah, found those. that was great. 
I found those, and then I found, like, that one... It wasn't an M4, but, like, maybe a cast of. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. Mm -hmm. that, that was a really fun mission. I think that might have been my favorite of the open world ones. I would agree. I, I think that was, like, a really, really well-paced one. Especially for being, like, an o more open. Mm -hmm. um, I also actually kind of liked the one where you play as Ghost, and you have to defuse the bombs. That was... Uh, I won't oh, the... Uh, yeah. anything more than that, but, like, the one where you have to, like, defuse bombs on the dam. Yeah, the Verdansk Dam, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really, really liked um, I liked the setting uh, for that a lot. And I liked the fact, like, how stealthy you could be. Like, I, I don't know. Like, just the the fact that you had such good options for stealth. Yeah, there was water really you could hide into. I guess it's another one where you can parachute into the map. But, yeah. Uh, and then what's cool is you have the yeah. challenge of, like, having to be careful when you're sliding down the dam because you can you can parachute but if you hit like the ramp of the dam you're gonna automatically slide and there's <laughs> like a sniper right there so oh, you yeah. have to like kind of carefully slide down because if you slide down too fast he'll see you wait you could actually like slide down the the dam itself yeah okay i didn't do that but i'll definitely be replaying <laughs> this campaign and trying that out <laughs> yeah so if you hit the uh so when you're parachuting um i wanted to kind of go i saw him uh when i was like pulling the binoculars out mm -hmm. and like kind of marking everybody and i was like oh i was like i see that one sniper i was like well i don't really want him to see me so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna like try to take him out quietly so i i jumped down but then um when i had the parachute out i accidentally uh hit the like the back of the dam and i started sliding <laughs> automatically because it yeah. was like wet and so uh like i had to really carefully like not let him see me because otherwise if i slid down too fast he would right right yeah but it was like such a cool attention to detail i was like man i was like yeah i understand that there's like like people get upset with like oh well they're reusing assets but i'm like there's still so much detail though put into this game i know right like uh it's sad. it's kind of sad yeah well and it's sad too because like everybody's just assuming it's bad because the the zeitgeist seems to be to say it's bad but like i really hope that people give it a shot now granted you know there's the whole question of should you spend the money if you are just wanting to play the campaign right i don't i've ever been able to say you should you know spend 70 dollars on a call of duty game for just the campaign oh oh same yeah yeah but like if you're gonna buy the game to play the multiplayer or zombies anyway i mean the campaign is just a bonus i think honestly yeah i i'd probably pay 70 for the like not trying to give anyone ideas but i would probably pay the <laughs> 70 70 for the multiplayer and zombies alone <laughs> exactly i mean like i mean people did for black ops 4 so <laughs> oh, that's true <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean you know well, like sure there was blackout uh -huh. but that's not like a that's not a mode that's gonna live for as long as a campaign will no it died pretty uh, Greg quickly does ask um he asks what are our thoughts and predictions on zombies? I don't want to spoil anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, some uh, stuff I'm... happens in the campaign that does not line up with zombies, so I just want to put that out there. <laughs> uh, I'm personally really excited. After playing the campaign, I could see how they could totally uh, implement zombies uh, into this, I think, and I'm, I'm excited. Um, all I got to say is uh, I think they picked probably the best possible modern warfare to put zombies in because mm -hmm. it makes sense given the fact that Makarov is a terrorist. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, like um especially to if you if you connect um if you connect uh some of the weapons or things that are in Modern Warfare 2019, uh I could see that maybe taking place. Uh, wait, what specifically are you talking about? Uh, I was thinking of, like, the white phosphorus and, like, maybe the, uh, chemicals. Oh, okay. So, like, in, yeah. in, uh, conjunction with that, like, purple, like, that new purple gas? Mm hmm Okay, I see. Yeah, I could definitely see that, too. That'd be kind of neat. Yeah, to be fair, I'm completely, like, blind on zombies lore. I'm actually still trying to, like, get myself up to date on that stuff. But, um, as a newer zombies fan... Uh, thankfully to Grav <laughs> for that one. I, uh, yeah, I personally think that there's a lot of, uh, potential. And I'm, I'm honestly really excited. Like, almost half the reason I bought, uh, this game specifically was for zombies. 
Yeah. Um, a because I'm just a big zombies like nut in general. Um, like not the mode, but like the gameplay the itself. Uh, yeah, like the, like just like anything that has zombies in it, like Walking Dead or State of Decay. Oh, or so more like the aesthetic, right? Yes, exactly. Um, so, and then to realize that I hadn't really played any of the zombies modes, um, up until like maybe a year or two ago, mm -hmm. uh, made me feel really dumb. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how am I such a big fan of like zombies in general, but I haven't played zombies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were some bangers. <laughs> yeah, no, there like... were. Cold War. Cold War, uh, yeah. <laughs> my favorite zombies. Oh, it's my uh, favorite zombies. Or... Oh, very nice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it's so good. It's just so good. Black Ops Three obviously is very good, but Cold War. I love the way Cold War feels. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, one thing I I want to inter interject here is that like, yeah. th did you ever see the uh, the COD Next event this year? Uh, I watched some of it. I didn't get to watch all of it, but I got to watch some of it. Did you see where they talked about zombies and uh, I believe his name was Zakayev still being alive? Oh no, I didn't hear that part. Okay, so yeah, uh, basically the TLDR, uh, zombies uh, dev said that um, Zakai is still alive and that, like, if you're wondering why, well, well, you didn't see his death, was what he said, right? Um, <laughs> if, you, if you saw the seasonal cutscenes for Modern Warfare 2019, um, the last one has his death. Mm -hmm. and, and so people are like, oh, well, why is he in zombies now? And so he's like, oh, well, uh, you didn't see his death. Maybe there was water below the, the missile silo. He didn't fall to his death there. <laughs> but That's the most he walking died. dead answer I've <laughs> ever heard in my entire life. Because, like, the my my, uh, my, cannon, my my head cannon for the walking dead is if you don't see somebody die in the walking dead, they're <gasps> still alive. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's the most walking dead answer I've ever heard. Yeah. Uh, people weren't really happy with it, though, just because, like, We've been to the missile silo in game, and there's no water there, and it would have burnt him alive anyway if he if he lived that from that two story or three story <laughs> fall. <laughs> but um, since he's in zombies, right, a, a dead character. I just want to say that like I think that kind of you now kind of proves like with this MW3 campaign, uh, if you if you've seen the trailer for zombies, you know who's in it. I think this kind of now proves that zombies and campaign aren't connected, and he was trying to be like a red herring in the whole thing. Interesting. I could I could certainly see that. Uh, and then Grav said zombies takes place between MW19 and Modern Warfare 2022. Uh, does it? 100%? Um, I mean, if anybody would know, I feel like Grav would be the one. Uh, he said also zombies is connected to campaign, but campaign is not connected to zombies. I would I don't think that's confirmed, but that is what my head canon is also. <laughs> I could certainly see that. Uh, I, I would prefer. I would prefer that. One hundred percent for where it takes place as well. Okay, I, I would definitely prefer the zombies to be like involved with campaign, but I don't think vice versa. Like, I don't think campaign should be connected to zombies at all. Like, n the events should not cross over one hundred percent between each of them. Like a Marvel Cinematic Universe, I don't want that. <laughs> I think that just, just kind of like takes the stakes away. Like Makarov, he yeah. he bring up the stakes stakes a lot in this game, but at the same time. Zombies are a much greater threat. I do love the idea of a zombie Makarov, though. <laughs> Which is cool if the if the zombies and campaign are kind of intertwined, like where you have the same characters from the campaign in zombies, right? So like a Makarov yes. in zombies would be sick. I, I would like that. That would be a great skin, honestly. <laughs> Makarov's zombie uniform. <laughs> Uh, I won't spoil anything, but I, I would like to see a couple of zombified skins for our uh, 141 task force. Yeah, we already like, have one for Ghost. Me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Aside from aside from Ghost, um, I would love I would love like a Captain Price uh, Captain Price one. Ooh. Yeah, me too. That would be so cool. Sort of like extinction style uniform. Yeah. That's oh, what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that name in a while. <laughs> I think that was actually probably like the last time that I got to like touch a Call of Duty before the 2019 one. Okay, so you, you played a lot of Extinction, or? Uh, I got to play a little Extinction. Okay. I didn't get to play a ton of Extinction, but the little bit I did, um, I actually liked, and I thought it was kind of underrated. Yeah, I, I uh, yeah, Extinction for the most part was kind of disliked, but I liked it for what I played. It's not yeah. as replayable though, like. I would say again, like this, this MW3 campaign is pretty replayable in comparison to a lot of COD uh, linear levels. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think one thing that I get kind of confused on, and maybe it's just because I'm a little bit newer as like a full hardy 
like Call of Duty fan now. Because like I if you would have asked me when I played 2019 if I was a full like Call of Duty fan, I would have probably told you no. Like mm -hmm. this is just like my first foray back into it. But like if you ask me now, I would say yeah, I'm a hardcore Call of Duty fan. And I think I like because like I have like 200 hours now in um Modern Warfare 2. Mm -hmm. 200? Uh, yeah, yes. Let's see what I got. Um, I got about yeah, it's probably nowhere near, but <laughs> probably 881 way, way hours. <laughs> oh, well, yes, wait, sir. I, wait, I have more than you. <laughs> wait, you have how much? Wait, I have 200. I have 881. Oh, 800. Okay, so yeah, I think 180. I was like, I <laughs> no, 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 like no, that's no. really low. For you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got, I got a lot. <laughs> Yeah. About four um, times that. Like, <laughs> for me, the only other game that I have that many hours in, like modern game wise, is Destiny 2. Okay. Which I, I quit Destiny. Um, I say I quit it like I quit cigarettes, but like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I quit Destiny 2 because that uh, I don't even want to say it was that addicting. It just like something fell off. Like I kind of hit like that thing where like it, it didn't feel as fun as it should. Mm. Um, but uh but yeah i don't know like i haven't been able to like st like stop finding enjoyment in modern warfare 2 um or like warzone or any of that like i've i found a lot of enjoyment especially this year like with the haunting i really got into the haunting mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um like the whole spawn thing like all you had to do is be like oh yeah we're putting spawn in call of duty and i was like oh okay well yeah now i'm a call <laughs> Now I'm definitely a Call of Duty fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I did like yeah. the Warzone event as well. I thought it was pretty fun to play. I, I think it's still available right now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I I just like... I would say that like... I, I think the games kind of get unfairly hated on a lot. Because it's just like... I mean, like, they're they're pretty solid. Like, I don't I'm really surprised. see a lot. Like, yeah, I'm surprised. Like, I'm... I, very much surprised just because like I, I never see this sort of hate generated towards a campaign it's like always been multiplayer people get burned out of multiplayer but i've never seen it happen to a campaign so that's why i'm just so yeah like i'm baffled well, the last time I saw <laughs> this much hate towards a campaign was maybe ghosts or World yeah War II, maybe yeah. like but they were like, just I, mediocre I was... they weren't bad you know like yeah, people people exactly. are like this is the worst campaign in cod but i'm like Bro, did you play BO3 or Vanguard? Like, Vanguard was recent. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, so I did play Vanguard. Um, mm -hmm. Vanguard, like, the only uh, Call of Duty I didn't play in between uh, all these was Cold War. Um, okay. I'm making my way back to it. But the only one I didn't play was Cold War. And I gotta be honest, like, Vanguard was the only one that I didn't finish. And I only didn't finish it because I thought it was a little underwhelming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was like, it uh, it didn't just... pay off, no. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't particularly like love this. I was like, it's not, it's not like bad, but it's not great. Vanguard was um, basically a whole crew of characters we've never seen before. They have each of their own flashbacks, which are either one to two missions long, I believe. And then at the very end, like it's a short campaign too, by the way. Um, I think it's mm -hmm. as short as this campaign, except minus the open world missions. So imagine this game, but with more linear missions. <laughs> uh, and at the very end, like, well, I'll, I can spoil it, I guess, since it's not really impactful yeah, or emotional I, I, or anything. I don't think anybody's going to be too butthurt about Vanguard's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. They, they get out of... for a two-year-old game. Yeah, two-year-old game. Bad game, though. <laughs> um, in my opinion, at least. Uh, the, the campaign, it ends where you guys get out of jail and you kind of use all your abilities in one final level that you've like been shown i guess across all the other campaign levels like I, that's what i find people praise the most are the abilities but I, I personally didn't really find them that unique or interesting like they're just like what i get a i get one perk from multiplayer that lets me see the trajectory of uh, grenades and my grenades like regenerate that's like one ability another one's like what is it hold breath with your sniper and slow down time or something like that Oh, with Polina. Yeah, that was so dumb because I was like, isn't that like a normal feature for every... It was a like... feature in World War II <laughs> in that campaign. Yeah. You, could do, you did it with exactly. every sniper. You didn't have to be Polina. So, I don't know. I just found that kind of underwhelming. 
And like, I understand that people kind of like that and swapping between all the operators on the final mission, but it was such a linear mission too. Like, <laughs> uh. Yeah, I, mm. Vanguard was just like not, it was not it for me. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. um, I think the, I, so, uh, TPG says, uh, fuck Destiny 2. I, I would have to agree. I, like, there's actually been a lot of talk about that kind of, like, imploding right now. I think for me, like, the difference between something like Call of Duty and Destiny, like, the reasons why I don't get tired of Call of Duty, but I do of Destiny, I think it's the fact that, like, the story is allowed to be separated from the multiplayer. Okay. Like, the fact that, like, if I want to enjoy a story, I can play a campaign or I can play an event on Warzone or whatever. And then, like, if I just want to shut my brain off and I just want to, like, play the game, I can also do that. Like, I don't have to pick and choose. Like, that was half the reason why I stopped playing. Because, like, God, everything is just like, oh, you gotta, like, you know, you gotta be engaged in the story if you want to. And I'm like, but I don't care. I just want to shoot aliens. Right. I guess that's kind of where we differ a little bit, because I think for Call of Duty, like, I haven't, I don't really play Destiny, but for Call of Duty specifically, I do like when the campaign's a bit more grounded with multiplayer. I think, I like, I like, I don't know, people always argue that, like, oh, multiplayer shouldn't be realistic. It's not even close to being realistic. You, you respawn, you regenerate health and all that, and it's like, I, at one point, at some point, you have to have a video game. Like, you, you can't, yeah. there's no such thing as a realistic video game. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Like, it, it's like, if you want something more realistic, you could go get Tarkov, mm -hmm. or you could get um, Insurgency. Like, you don't have to play, like, I think it's weird when people die on the hill of like, oh, I want realism, and I'm gonna play Call of Duty for that. And I'm like, that's not really, like, if, it, for me, that's like, maybe at the beginning? It Maybe. all depends on what they mean by realism. Like, do they mean game mechanic wise, or are they talking about art style? Because I'm pure, art, purely art style wise. I I like it more grounded art style wise. Yeah, and I can understand that, like for sure. Like, I think art style wise, okay, that makes sense. You know, like, does it throw people off that spawn is next to like, you know, a World War or what was it like when Terminator was in the Vanguard? Um, <laughs> like thing like that was really off-putting because i was like yeah, he turned chrome and stuff <laughs> yeah uh, i was like uh, or like the attack on titan skin i was like oh, this is weird i was like that hurt <laughs> I, I was like i was like i don't have a problem with the dissident like the narrative dissidence of this but i was like this is so strange mm -hmm. um and I gotta be honest, there's nothing weirder than shooting Nicki Minaj and Sam <laughs> Savage <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I still uh... haven't gotten over it how weird that is <laughs> and they they stick out too because the, the maps are still connected to the campaign and the the military world uh -huh. right they're they're more yeah. they're not as bright they're kind of grayish like not i'm not saying that they're ugly but they are less poppy as a as a pink Nicki minaj skin you know so it's gonna stand out yes. a lot more um yes like i actually think like as far as like weird skins go like like, Spawn didn't stick out too much for me because he was already kind of, like, half military anyway. Um, it, just with, like, the guns and, like... I've like, seen there the were a couple... There, there were a couple Spawn outfits in the Battle Pass, right? Like, you had the military one, and then you had the the mask one with the green sort of visual effects going on on his shoulders. Yes. Yeah, like, the most egregious Spawn one is honestly probably just, like, the actual costume. Mm -hmm. Um but like uh like the clown kind of fits and like all of the other spawn outfits kind of fit um his his like original al simmons costume really fits because yeah he's literally just a soldier mm -hmm. so like all those i think visually fit really well um vanguard for me was weirder just because it was world war ii and like yeah <laughs> yeah i'm just that happy devolved that so finally, quickly <laughs> it really did I, I'm just happy they finally got the thing of, like, let's let these skins cross over into the next game. Because, uh, to mm. me, that was actually mm -hmm. part of the reason why I didn't even want to care about the, like, the skins, like, at all. Like, I like the skins in Call of Duty, and there are some that I'm really interested in getting, but most of the time I don't because they don't cross over. Um, but now and they're that, so like, expensive. MW2s, yeah, well, that's the thing, too, is it's like, 
I don't want to spend this just to play this for a year and then not get to ever use it again. You know? Mm -hmm. So the fact yeah. that like they're actually letting you like take them over to MW3, I'm not like now I can kind of be like, okay, I'm I'm a little more like lenient on it. Like I bought the Ash skin for uh Warzone and like it's great because I'm like, okay, well I know I get to use that in MW3. Mm -hmm. Um plus the fact that we have third person mode now gives me extra reason because now I can actually see the skin too. Right. So yeah, I'm like, yeah, it gives me double reason. BG says buy a campaign in Destiny 2 and get it taken away in a year. That's another reason <laughs> to stop playing Destiny 2. Um, because at least with Call of Duty, I can go back and play the campaign. I literally cannot play the Destiny 2 campaign. I I, I listened to like a certain sort of like, a, I think it was from I Hate Everything. He, he had a Destiny 2 sort of like review or not a review, but yes. like a retrospective on yeah. the campaigns and how they do that. that like that's insane to me. <laughs> you can just take away yeah. a whole campaign. That you've yeah, already bought like world of warcraft um i thought world of warcraft did that but then i realized you can actually go back and still like you know find the things for world of warcraft if you mm -hmm. want to um but like that's one thing i cannot stand um like if you're gonna like if like because i've probably spent i don't know how much money i spent on destiny but like i know i bought the forsaken um dlc and then i bought the uh uh whatever the beyond light one and like the fact that I, there's a chance that I'll never get to play like Beyond Light again, or the fact that I can't currently play Forsaken, that's insane to me. <laughs> like, yeah. I spent money to <laughs> play that, but I can't play it anymore. Like, it's weird. How are they not like downloadable content packs like that are optional? Like, I, I don't understand that. Yeah. And, like, at least with Call of Duty, like, the one thing I can at least say with Call of Duty, it's like, you know, if people want to get butthurt about, like, skins and stuff, it's like, okay, but at least it's just cosmetic, and it's not like, oh, we took the entire game off the market. Mm -hmm. Like, like yeah. th that is one of my biggest things, is it's like, at least Call of Duty is still on the market. At least you can still buy it and play it. We're not that extreme yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Like, but... I don't know, um, like, if you've realized, like, so many but like there's so many games that like as i've gone to pc i've realized that they just pull off the market um because they lose the rights to the property um, and like it's insane that like you can't like just play some of these games anymore like the marvel ultimate alliance and stuff like that like you can't buy those games anymore and it sucks it's like how like you guys made this game but because you lost the rights to it you can't like purchase it anymore that's sad. yeah that's sad <laughs> it's so strange so like i guess for me the other thing too is it's like at least i know call of duty is popular enough that it's probably not going anywhere <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i mean we'll see I, what happens I, when microsoft gets it <laughs> hopefully it's yeah. not like the same as halo infinite i really hope not yeah i i really really hope not as a big halo fan um it's been really sad to watch the state of affairs with that yeah what exactly but happened with it though like was it just like less content like over time and then people got laid off it's, i want to say it's the way that it launched um because when okay. it launched it just had a really abysmal like content like amount and so like when it launched like you couldn't even pick like team deathmatch like what mode you wanted when it launched it literally <laughs> only had <laughs> it literally like you know you know it's like they take sometimes they take like that map rotation away or whatever this didn't even let you like pick a mode they're like okay you're just in a queue now so we'll put you in whatever mode we have <laughs> oh right yeah it's just like a quick play filter and then you had the whole issue of yes. people not playing objectives because they wanted to play tdm yeah like yeah, and it was abysmal because it's like if I don't want to play capture the flag, don't make me play capture the flag. Yeah, <laughs> like, and so a lot of people got really burnt on that, and it dropped pretty quick because people are like, "Well, this is stupid." And then even though they patched it in in a couple weeks, it's like you guys really like dropped the ball, mm. like immediately. Yeah. yeah. So it was just that, and then it had a pretty limited amount of maps. Like the gameplay was there. The gameplay was absolutely there, but like the content structure and the very slow rollout of like seasons and everything, I personally think it was just the way it launched. Um, okay. Like it's starting to get a little bit of a comeback, um, which I'm hoping it continues to. Um, 
So basically, well, yeah, it was it, just like negatively received. So they were like, okay, we're just gonna scrap this project. Maybe like lay off a whole bunch yeah. of people, let the rest work on it, maybe improve it over time to see if we can scrape a few more bucks. Yeah, they they did fire um, whoever was in charge of was it whoever was in charge of it, like, and once they got, I think it was her. Once they got her out, like things almost immediately started getting better. Like they were like more communicative and they were better about like talking with the community and being like, okay, so here's what we're going to do. Here's our roadmap. Here's this. Because the thing is they were just being so quiet. And it's like, you can't do that with a live service game. Mm -hmm. Like you need to be, you need to be communicative. Like, especially with something like Halo, um, if it's going to take the route of a Call of Duty or a Fortnite, like, you need to, like, let people know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, what would you think, like, to tie this back into MW, or, yeah, the Modern Warfare franchise, what did you think of Modern Warfare 2's, like, communication? Um, I felt, I mean, compared to Halo, I felt like it was, like, leagues better. <laughs> um, so, like, I don't know if, like, maybe I had Stockholm Syndrome, so, like... Perhaps. I was, like, <laughs> yeah, it, it was, like, it was, it was great, but, like... Like, everything during The Haunting has been pretty good, I feel like. Um, but, like, I'm now kind of like, okay, well, The Haunting's kind of over, so now I'm kind of waiting to see. But then I'm like, well, we're about to go into Modern Warfare 3, so I guess that's mm -hmm. what we're waiting for. I, I watch a yeah, lot of... I guess I'm just starting to, to, like, get used to paying attention, I guess. Yeah. I, I watch a lot of YouTubers, too, like, in the COD sphere. I, I like to see everyone's opinions on stuff, and I think... Mm -hmm. Uh, a common consensus among everyone has been just like the lack of communication with Infinity Ward with MW2. Uh, at, at launch, they kind of had some intel drops. They were explaining their design decisions around like the maps a little bit. Uh, like for for example, they had a Farm 18 one where they were like, okay, so one of the challenges on this map was trying to uh, figure out how much foliage, like how dense our foliage should be on this map. Should it be really dense so the players can hide in it or should, or can it be like not enough so then it looks kind of eh aesthetically. <laughs> so they had to find a perfect perfect balance for that. I guess they kind of explained the center of the map too. They were like, oh, we want like a, a shoot house sort of combat uh, room in the center of this map. And that was pretty much all they said about their design philosophy. Like they didn't go into anything else really throughout the whole year. I guess they explained yeah. near the start of the year like how they wanted the minimap to work. They, they were like, we don't want red dots because we want p players to focus on like what's oh, in front of I them. I do remember that. Like, I remember a lot of controversy with that. I, I personally But it's kind of like, like year we'll three just... of that, you know? <laughs> yeah. I was like, whatever. We'll just kind of see how it plays out. Oh, I'll also, hi, Jacob. Uh, I do see you. And uh, yeah, thank you for thinking that this is better than the bookie documentary. <laughs> <laughs> I actually oh, did gosh. watch that boogie documentary. That was uh, terrifying. Um, that's the type of documentary you walk away from and you're like, I have to make better choices than that person. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh. You're like, I have to be better than that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Terrifying. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm still kind of getting used to like paying attention to um, to like the Call of Duty like news and like being up to date on like what actually is happening in the community um but i'm happy that like i'm finally kind of coming around to like just solely focusing on this and not really like I, I i hate to say it but like i'm not really caring what they tell me about halo i'll just play halo and <laughs> just let it happen mm -hmm. uh jacob says do not watch drifter is drifter a call of duty channel oh drifter yeah he he used to be a call of duty channel i don't i think he branched out uh, a year ago or so, he but drifted. He, dr he drifted away. <laughs> drifted. <laughs> Let me see what he's up to. The worst Call of Duty channel I saw was um, oh, it was some old guy, and he was like, all he does is just complain about Call of Duty. Um, I mean, I know there's a lot of people that complain about Call of Duty, but <laughs> th like this guy exclusively complains. Like that, that is all he does. Old guys in um, old channel or old men <laughs> uh, or women? Okay. Yeah. I, I don't recall him then. Uh, I should see. Oh, uh, Grav says it's eight thoughts. Oh, eight thoughts. Yeah. So uh, surprisingly yeah. enough, Drifter and Eight Thoughts have a history together. Uh, 
Ah. Not a good history though. Like it was more so eight thoughts. Uh, had like a, I don't know if you saw it, but like he was streaming on Twitch, and one of his one of eight thoughts real life friends went to Drifter's house to like harass him at night. I think he oh might have been God. armed or something, and it was it was a whole situation. It was really bad. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, it kind of contributed to Eight Thoughts getting his channel removed from YouTube, I think. But Eight Thoughts wow. came back recently on a channel named like Not Eight Thoughts, and he's been uploading yeah. since then. But he hasn't gotten into anything near that level of drama again. Like, like thank God, don't harass people. <laughs> but yeah, like, God, God, poor Drifter. <laughs> yeah, that's oh God. That's terrifying. Mm -hmm. Um, he says, uh, Jacob says he still whines about skill-based matchmaking. So I, can I ask you a question as somebody who's like, sure. kind of newer to Call of Duty? Yeah. <laughs> what is skill, I, I know the, the crux of the argument with skill-based matchmaking. Do you think it's still a big deal? No. Like, <laughs> I didn't think so. I like, think people, yeah, I think, I swear, everyone is up playing it to the max right now. I, I don't find it too bad, like at my skill level, I'm at a 1.35 KD right now in Modern Warfare 2. I've been going up every year still, like MW19. I was, I was kind of high in MW19 at the start of the year, but then I like did the Damascus challenge and I went down to like a 1.1. A but every year since then I've been going up higher and higher. I think Cold War was actually my highest at like a 1.45 KD, something around there. But I've never found skill-based matchmaking to be a detriment to the game. Like, I, I kind of like facing players my own skill level. And uh, Drifter and Exclusive Ace, they are kind of stats guys. They mm. together have done collaborations in the past where they went over skill-based matchmaking and its effects in Call of Duty, how, uh, what kind of opponents they're getting. Like they use COD Tracker to kind of uh, get all their information together, like they researched all their opponents, got the average kill-death ratio of everyone. And if you look at those graphs, no one talks about it, you look at those graphs, and people that are like below a 0.9 KD, they're on average getting players in their lobbies, like on the enemy team, that are a little bit higher than them, around like a 1 KD. And people that are above a 1.2 KD, they are getting players on average enemy players that are lower than them so technically people that are above a 1.2 are benefiting off of skill based skill based matchmaking the most but it seems like oh. those players are complaining about it the most at the same time which is kind of where that whole conversation about oh you want just the uh, if you're if you're complaining about skill based matchmaking and you have a high kd you just want to smash like kids and uh do extremely well in the lobbies <laughs> right Wait. See, I just so like I I'll have to look at my my KD ratio. Is there a way to to see it without uh, like going into the game? Unfortunately, not yet. <laughs> COD okay. Tracker is usually the main source people use, but they haven't d like updated their website for Modern Warfare Two yet for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Like if they're having any issues or anything, but it's still not available. <laughs> Twinkle says, "Let me clip that real quick." <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> by all means please do, do it <laughs> see like because my thing was when i got into playing modern warfare 2 i remember well it's the, this last year's one specifically i remember hearing so much about skill based matchmaking because like i was getting hyped for the game and i was like okay mm -hmm. like let me hear what people's issues are and i just keep hearing like everybody bitch about it and i'm like but i don't understand the problem because wouldn't you want to face somebody around your like skill level i know like, right <laughs> I, like I, I totally don't understand that argument because like for example I, i'm a big well i used to be a big smash player right um when i had a nintendo switch i played a lot of smash brothers and mm -hmm. i would not want to play a like a person that is not around my same skill level yeah because like, you want to keep that rhythm going like in, yeah, in a smash if, fight if I just kept playing people that were worse than me, like, no, no offense to anybody, like, I'm not going <laughs> to pretend like I'm amazing at Smash, but um, I got second place in a tournament that I went to one time. So I, I like to think I'm decent at Smash. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, if I just kept playing people that were worse than me, I would never learn anything. Right. Yeah, I would never get better. So, like, I don't understand the idea that skill-based matchmaking is bad it kind of sounds like people are only upset about it because it's not easy and it's not as um what's the word i'm looking for uh what's, what's the 
That's the word I'm looking Casual? for. Casual? It's, it's like, yes, thank you. It's there like, you <laughs> I can't just turn on Call of Duty and just shoot people. And it's like, well, you can. You play against but... bots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and it's like, I feel like there are game modes that are suited for that. Like, I feel like instead of changing, instead of changing the, the way that you group with people, they have game modes that are like suited better for that. Yeah, like gun game or infected. Like they're party game modes. Yeah. Yeah, where they where they even the score out a little bit. Like that's yeah. kind of Halo's whole thing is that it's based around power weapons. Right. And if you just play a mode that is based not around power weapons, but like gun game, like you said, or infected, like that's perfect for that. Yeah, it's perfect for just hopping on and having a chill time. Like you're not playing for stats. But in, in public matches you're kinda you're kinda playing for stats. Like you gotta admit. Like you're trying to do better than you usually do. You wanna learn the game, you wanna uh, get streaks and best your opponents the best you can. Sometimes, yeah. like, even in the older CODs without skill-based matchmaking, you would get trashed upon by, like, the the people that were a lot better than you, and then sometimes you would stomp on people that are a lot worse than you. But, like, yeah. it's it's the same now, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it... Well, that's the thing, is it doesn't feel all that different. Like, I, I didn't get to play a ton of multiplayer back then, but, like, from what I have played, it doesn't feel all that different it just feels like there's maybe more people playing now so there's more like varied skill levels mm -hmm. uh, but, something that like yeah. is bad though about skill based matchmaking like no one wants it objectively no one wants it people want to have like their connection be the best they want king the ping to be king <laughs> as they say <laughs> So, like, obviously I agree with that, and I think they should always go for that. I think they kind of tested the waters with the sort of ping stuff in the MW3 beta weekend number two, where the connection was kind of getting worse, and it's a lot more noticeable when your time to kill is longer as well. But, that would uh... explain why <laughs> I probably suffered more during the beta. Because, mm -hmm. like, I did notice that the time to kill did feel just a tad... Uh... Because didn't they didn't they increase the health to 150? Um, like for the oh, entire right. game, yeah, not between betas, but for this entire game, yes, it's uh, 150 it. per se. Um, we don't really like you can't really judge what the time the kill is going to be just based on the health either, because you could have 150 health, but you could make the weapon damage like higher or lower to make more vari variables, and 150 health could right. just feel the exact same as 100 health, right? Yeah, if the weapons yeah. are different. But you know, so, the, the time uh, to kill, like how I measure it though, is usually around milliseconds. I think this one was yeah. around 250 to 300 milliseconds, around there. Okay. What was uh, Modern Warfare 2's? Uh, actually, I'll look it up, maybe. Um, Modern Warfare 2's does fluctuate a lot though. Not based on the ping, but based on damage multipliers. Because if you got two headshots, it was like a kill in Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> it, was a, it was a high multiplier. Um, on the head, but uh, MW2 TTK. Let me just check the average TTK. Oh, nice! A lovely chart from Exclusive Ace himself. <laughs> <laughs> so we have up to MW2's beta here. So Mono for two seems to be about 160 milliseconds. Okay. Which is very close to MW19's, like a tiny bit faster. Yeah. Model for 2019s looks like it's 180. I was going to say, didn't pe some people think that 2019s was, like, too slow? I think people are thinking MW19s was too high. <laughs> or, yeah, sorry, that's what that's what I meant. Like, too fast, I guess, to put it in yeah. other words. Um, yeah. But Model for 2019s is pretty in line with World at War, MW2, the OG, and BO1. It's yeah, longer than Ghosts, like longer than MW3s. I know uh, some people really, really hate the uh, the armor. Um, actually, going back to uh, the campaign for a slight moment, uh, the um, the uh, Griffin video that I was watching, one of his biggest complaints was the fact that they actually implemented the armor in the campaign. Okay. Um, but to be honest, like they didn't put it on every enemy. So like, because mm -hmm. he he was making it sound like every enemy had the armor, and I was like, but they like not every no. enemy has it. They didn't, no. <laughs> it, it, no. Was, it was a small percentage. And, yeah, and you had armor you yourself, could, too. Exactly. And you could normally clearly tell who had armor and who didn't. Yes, yes. 100%. Like, if you, if you couldn't, 
I could certainly understand the frustration more. Um, his biggest one, I think he said, was the uh, the snipers, um, the camo thermal snipers. On the snow mission? Um, yep. Okay. Yeah. He, he had I a didn't... big, he had a big yeah. problem with, <laughs> with those. Uh, but, like, outside of that... I thought it was kind of was... nice, because, like, it was one of the final missions in the game, right? Like, difficulty kind of ramps up mm -hmm. a little bit, and... I, I didn't notice they had armor at first either, but like I, I could tell right away after I shot one, <laughs> and yeah. then all the rest had armor. He was like, he was really upset because he's like, they were. He's like, oh well, there's too much armor on them. I should be able to one shot them. And I'm like, mm. but, and I was like, not necessarily. And I was like, you got to keep in mind like your, your starting weapon for that mission is a P90, and I was like, if you just like pick up a sniper, they're gonna go down much faster. Yeah, so near the start of the mission, you only kill one sniper before you get to the clearing, right? Uh, yep. Once you kill that sniper, you just pick up his sniper and <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. And doesn't his sniper have the thermal scope too? Ah. Uh, because I, I picked thermal up, scopes uh, the... didn't help on that mission though, because the snipers ha were fully clothed; they didn't show up on the oh, thermal. That's right. I noticed yeah. that. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't... that is that is a fair point. I don't know if it I... was thermal, to be honest. I found it a little easier to see them with the thermal, but not because of the thermal itself, just because, like, I could kind of pick out the black and the green, if mm. that makes sense. Okay, yeah. Um, Twinkle says the, those camo snipers were easy, though. He says just snipe them back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, what I did on that mission, though, like, I was having a little bit of trouble uh, pushing the snipers themselves head on. So then I was like, you know, I'm just going to take a left flank. And then I was like, oh, shit, they're just hiding behind cover uh, from our teammates still over there. So I got a clear angle at them now. <laughs> yeah, like what, when uh, they make a they make a comment because you have Shepard with you at that point. And yes, they're like, they're like, oh, well, we could hug the tree line or we could take them head on. And I'm like, yeah, they oh, do hug the tree line. You could sneak you could sneak up on them. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like it just depends on like which route you take. But like if you're good enough, you could just sneak behind them like. You don't technically have to, like, take them head on. Ah, uh, one moment. Mm -hmm. uh, Twinkle says the thermal won't pick up their signal, but if you have eyesight, then you should be good. Hmm. Yep. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, you, you gotta, like, there's a special thing you gotta you gotta do beforehand. It's, it's uh, called peeling your eyes. <laughs> you gotta keep your head on a swivel <laughs> it was really funny because like when griffin was talking about it he was talking like like it was the hardest thing to see these snipers and i was like i mean if you know what you're looking for it's not really yeah <laughs> once you like, find the first one it's like okay that's what they look like i guess they're a little bit hard spot because they ring camouflage like a, a sniper would be <laughs> but yeah which like i was yeah. kind of happy i was like this might be the first time a sniper is wearing good camouflage <laughs> like yeah finally <laughs> but like once you see them moving like i mean they're pretty they're pretty telltale or their scope glint <laughs> yeah yes yes the, the good old scope glint mm -hmm. uh twinkle says school two 1v1 win Ooh, he's talking about tony hawk uh yes we should absolutely i i will let you know twinkle that was one of the first games i ever played so uh my cousin still owes me from a pro score that I got on that growing up. <laughs> uh, and then TPG says Fortnite is better than COD. Why Halo skin? But to be honest, so I don't have anything against Fortnite, but I, I don't particularly love Fortnite. Um, and I think it's just because I don't want to exclusively label it because of the player base, but I think I l I don't care <gasps> for the player base as much. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, like, I, and it's not that I think Fortnite's bad. Like, I think Fortnite is fine. I think people, I think it unfairly gets uh, shat on a lot. Um, like, I, I really don't think it's that bad. <laughs> but I, I personally prefer uh, COD or Halo. As a game or community? Uh, yeah, just as a game. Okay. Yeah, uh, I, I love Fortnite. I think the support for it's great. Uh, I don't think they've really disappointed me in Fortnite as much as COD sometimes does. But <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, uh, uh, they're both I good franchises, though. Say, yeah, one thing I will say is like Fortnite is very like 
they're very good about being upfront with what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like there's never a point. Like, I always know what's happening with Fortnite, even though I don't play it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that should say a lot about how good they are communicating. Yeah, and the OG like, map oh, just came back. <laughs> I'm sure you yeah, saw that. Like, I, I, yeah, I did see that. And I was like, the fact that I know about that and I don't even play Fortnite is very funny to me. Like, that's the type of exposure and communication that I think COD could benefit from. Mm -hmm. uh, did we want to dive into the campaign again? Because I do gotta go soon. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, if you have any uh, kind of like lasting thoughts or impressions on it. Um, yeah, I would love to. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Got kind of sidetracked. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, to circle back to, I guess, the the plot holes and stuff, uh, I don't think MW3 actually had, like, any plot holes that were noteworthy and that come to mind to me, uh, compared to MW2 especially, because, like, MW2's plot holes, like, for example, you had uh, that one guy you d detained after you crossed the border, I forget his name, but he, oh, he, he yeah. tells you, I've done no crimes, yet he's sh he's uh, shot a rocket launcher off at two policemen before you tried getting him in his in his house that he also burned down uh, with one of your crew members in there. Um, As he also ran through a bunch of other people's houses, which could be considered breaking and entering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, there's that one, and then... Wasn't there some more in that campaign as well? Um, oh, the Graves betrayal. Yeah. Why? Why do it then? Why do it then before you get the missiles? Like, what was the point? It made no sense. Yeah. The the whole Graves betrayal felt a little like we need betrayal because it happened in the second game ten years ago, mm -hmm. or what whatever time frame. Like, it didn't feel like super necessary. Whereas, like, I feel like a lot of the callbacks that this campaign had felt more like a love letter to the series as opposed to let's let's do this because Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. So the betrayal itself, though, like it wasn't very smooth. I would say I think smooth is the best word you could say in I Marvel for Two. But then they have like they bring that back up in MW in MW Three, and it, it feels natural. Like if they were already enemies, like in the past like and they're trying to be teammates like they're kind of iffy around each other um they uh like graves goes to shake farah and uh what's his name uh, alex's hands he shakes them both yeah. and he goes to soap i believe to shake his hand and soap's like no <laughs> i'm not shaking yeah, that just like walks away he's like uh, -uh. Mm -hmm. and i like the idea i i like that too because like it kind of does a good job of like Alex, because like Alex kind of had to learn to trust a little bit in the first campaign, yeah. Um, you, you know, with like Farah and like her like whole unit basically. Mm -hmm. And I like the idea that he's like now kind of willing to trust a bit more. Um, and so he's like, you know what? Okay, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. And then Soap is like, nah, I've been burned <laughs> too many times. He's like, I'm yeah. not. <laughs> it and just Alex says was, a lot about the character. Yeah, and Alex was kind of like, oh, I wish we, or Farah or Alex, I forget who it was, but they're like, oh, I wish we could all just get along again, you know? Yeah, yeah. Or he's like, yeah, yep, we're, we all work as one. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, this campaign yep. was good. I love the story and just the characters overall, how they interact. And like earlier on, too, we had an interaction with, I guess it's more spoiler territory, I guess. Do we, do we want to get into spoiler territory? You know what? Um, yeah. Uh, let's 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 go ahead and go into spoiler territory. Yeah. Um, if you do not care about Call of Duty spoilers, uh, then you're gonna be fine here. But if you do care about Call of Duty spoilers, uh, yeah, we're this gonna. This is your final uh, warning. <laughs> this is your final warning. Get out of here! Get out scram. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna talk about that scene where Makarov. Uh, kisses soap and then, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> as we've seen then, on prestigious keys <laughs> thumbnail <laughs> yeah. yeah and then he uh he marries price and then mm -hmm. Shepard and him have a baby and no i'm just kidding <laughs> bride uh, makarov walks down the aisle with all the flower petals yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yuri's yeah, his makarov. best man <laughs> do you take <laughs> do you take soap mcdavish but yeah, uh, uh, yeah, so between uh, Farah and Price, they had a conversation earlier on in the campaign in this, like, oh, the atmosphere of the level, or not the level, but the, the area too, like, it was all forested, like, kind of, like, fall, and leaves were, like, falling, I think, too, or something. Uh, it was just beautiful, but they were talking about, like, uh, they were talking about where 
Farah got the missiles from, uh, like her missiles yeah. that were stolen, and he was like trying to pry her on about like if it was General Shepard, it's not a good idea, and she's like, it's none of your business, but it kind of gives it away that yes, it was from General Shepard. And he's like, we, we're not like friends with the General Shepard anymore. And he kind of like really tries to express that to her. And I, I just thought that was like really well done. Yeah. And I like the whole, um, so one thing I thought was interesting, I think I was reading it in, I think it was the IGN review. It was either the IGN review or the games radar review. They were saying that the, um, that the motivations for what Makarov wanted wasn't clear and I was like what that could not be further from the truth <laughs> no because they spend <laughs> the entire campaign talking about he how he wants to pit the west versus the east yes that is the entire that's the entire plot <laughs> did you okay did you see infinite warfare's campaign uh yes do you remember the the villain at the very start of the campaign uh I think it was yeah. was it wolf or no not wolf it was I call him Jon Snow because Jon Snow the, yeah <laughs> but yeah <laughs> commander koch that's his name um yeah. so you remember how he treated his teammates like uh teammates <laughs> his his other mars soldiers mm -hmm. like uh like uh what was it it was uh he did a speech it was um carrying us for the week and then he shot him yes yes compare that to what makarov did in this campaign to uh yeah. nolan or ivan whoever it was oh yeah ivan um yeah when he shoots ivan at the beginning I was like, he gives the speech about the fact that, um, that like loyalty. Your, like loyalty is what we have. And that is like the most important thing. And you didn't trust and I was me. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then like that part where you have to go get Nolan, where you have to like expel him. I'm like, dude, I was like, I'm not even sure. Like after having seen the way Makarov's team works, I was like, I don't even know that he's going to talk. I was like, <laughs> it almost feels like kind of a, like a useless thing. I love the camaraderie he has with his uh, his soldiers too, though. Like Magrav made sure that he had his. Uh, I think it was Nolan who lives, right? Like Ivan was the one who died. Yes. Okay. Yes, Ivan was the one. That so died. Mm -hmm. yeah, he pulls Nolan in on the ship as they're getting out of the Gulag area, right? Mm -hmm. Like Magrav gets on first. He makes sure you're up there with him. He's like your best man. Yes. <laughs> it, it was, and then when he gets into his his base with the Coney group, he goes like open arms with. Uh, What's her name? Me Me Mel Melina? Uh, Mel yes. M Melina? I almost called her Melanova, but I, was like, <laughs> I don't think it's that. <laughs> yeah, it's like a reunion, everyone's happy, and then he, he has the speech with uh, Ivan. <laughs> and then yeah. and then it's not even Makarov the one to shoot him, it's uh, Nolan. Yeah. And then he gives his patch to Nolan, <laughs> and it was like, oh yeah. shit. Like, that but was you know so funny? good. <laughs> you know what's really cool, though, is it's like, he took the patch off Ivan, almost saying like, okay he's he like he's free game now yeah um, it was like a bunch of hyenas after him like <laughs> the lion king yeah like okay who's gonna take his position and then nolan sees it and he's like okay I'm, he went in for that I'm opportunity <laughs> and yeah. it's and, and it's goes, also no. it, it, sorry uh, it also goes to show that it's not just makarov who has this ideal it's the whole group that believes in yeah. it yeah yeah like the fact that the whole coney group feels so like like they feel like a mindset because like one the thing elitists. i never really got <laughs> yeah one thing i never really got playing modern warfare 2 like the original was that like i never really got the impression that like all the soldiers really cared mm -hmm. about makarov's thing because like we never really got to like know anything about them we never got to see them interact with makarov really outside of no russian yeah um not that i can like think of off the top of my head anyway um but like this like you really get the sense that like everybody is on board with Makarov and they're all like, uh, yeah, no, w we all stand for the same thing. And, you know, we'll be damned if we don't go down with him. Yeah. They all have a common goal and they're just in for it, <laughs> but they all, yeah. they also are like flawed people too. As we saw with Melina, like she cares about her money more than I guess <laughs> losing more it. Than Makarov. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. More than Makarov. Um, do we want to talk about, the uh this game's version of no russian yes i thought it was well the, the the passenger yeah the passenger uh let me see there where is it passenger so that one we play as samara one of farah's uh friends i guess from the past that was so it's scary so, <laughs> oh my god the the moment that uh you're looking at your phone and the guy is like <laughs> the guy next to you is like 
you have a lovely family. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> oh no. And then he calls out like, the name of the one of the, one of them. <laughs> it's just it just yeah. keeps escalating. It's like, oh no. You just oh no. Know. Oh no, he knows everything. <laughs> yeah, you just know. And then like the terrifying nature of that scene is when they step is when he pulls the gun on you and then knowing that you'll grab the gun from him. Because mm. it's like mm -hmm. that's what he wants you to do, but you don't realize that. Yeah. And so then when you when you do stand up, everybody automatically is like, "Oh no, she's got a gun." Yeah. And there's no time for explanation because that's how that that's absolutely how that would play out. Yeah. Like, like it was also just oh. it's so scary that it's like uh they used her for her race too, just to frame it that way. Yes. That that was like, terrifying. Like. I really felt the like, helplessness of that is like God. <laughs> they mm -hmm. really set this up for us. Yeah, and then when when they come out and they're all like they're the Russians, but they're all like we're the ULF and she's one of us, and I'm like, uh, uh wait a minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, don't group me in here. And yeah. then like it's really sad because even when the air marshals are like fighting, um, like when the few of the guards on the plane are shooting at you and at them even when um even when you shoot them it, it's like they don't care like it doesn't like it doesn't matter to them and they still try and shoot you the, those were the wait who was shooting us at the, at the front of the plane um like when like when they come out like at the at the beginning and like there's that really small firefight yeah who who was right. well, like i was macrov's um uh, coney group right wasn't it yeah okay yep Sorry, I just thought yeah. you said it was someone else or a different team. And oh, I was like, no, wait, yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just a few people that are basically like giving, like letting the passengers know that the plane is being overtaken. Mm -hmm. And then like, and then when they come out and then Makarov comes in, puts the bomb vest on you and he's like, okay, he's like, you're going to blow up this plane. You're going to kill all these people. And I'm like, that, <laughs> that is awful. Like, yeah, <laughs> oh, man. It's just so bad. And then the worst part is like, not only like, do you, are you responsible because you're the one holding this bomb vest, but then like when you try and get to the phone and, but you have the gun and you're the reason, mm -hmm. like, it's so sad. <laughs> it's just yeah. so sad. It's unfortunate. It was so, uh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> and then like the mission after it too, where you're playing as far trying to get rid of that evidence like i was just like oh god oh no this yeah. is like really bad framing for us as well as it, farah yeah it felt so dirty but i was like if you don't do it the alternative is that war happens mm -hmm. and i was like it's really not like it's not a good scenario on either side but like that's what i like about this new modern warfare trilogy is like how great it makes everything it, it was like because... how easy some decisions are to make but like at the same time it's it's like hard to not make that decision you know yeah and what i love too is like the gameplay kind of reflects your helplessness in that situation because mm -hmm. they give you the gun and you're supposed to you're supposed to uh you know your 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 lizard brain is like oh i gotta shoot people but then you're like these are all <laughs> civilians i don't want to shoot anybody yeah like when you're but trying like, to get the phone yeah yeah it's like oh do i do i aim at them maybe to push them out of the way like i did in mw19 right or in MW2, yeah. like in the trailer park? Yeah, and then you're but like, But no, they attack you! <laughs> <laughs> you're like, do I know Russian this? Do I shoot people to save everybody on this plane or no? Yeah. It's, oh, it's just so good. Like, to me, that is where, like, the Modern Warfare trilogy, like this new one, is at its best, is when it's putting you in those really uncomfortable situations, mm -hmm. and it's, like, really making you question the morality of the situation you're in. Yeah. Yeah, and and even with like Farah's mission after the airplane, I was like, like during my stream of the campaign, I was like, okay, so I personally, like as an outside viewer, I could I probably see Farah having a better sort of like a outcome if she herself was the one to release the information or her government release the information, right. so that it's not coming from the Russians trying to expose them, right? Like at least they're mm -hmm. they're trying to. Uh, it doesn't look like they're trying to get rid of the information. So I thought Makarov maybe would have tried to show that they were the trying to get rid of it. But I was con I was wondering about yeah. is when they come up on the scene, mm -hmm. like of the airplane and everything, like because they said, okay, well we gotta get here before the authorities do. I'm like, mm -hmm. 
when they say get here before the authorities, like when you leave all the like Russian bodies, like obviously we know it's the Coney group, but <gasps> oh, are, yeah. like aren't they gonna be able to tell that like they were shot? Yeah, like after the fact that the crash happened. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, mm. that, that was the only thing I was like, hmm. There's I that wonder. too, yeah. Yeah, but I guess it, it, you know, they also have footage of, you know, people with guns. So it is, it is plausible that, you know, it could be somebody on the plane. But yeah, yeah I'm just curious, like, if, if somebody would put that together. Yeah, like the tension was kind of there, but like, I guess they did, re they resolved that sort of tension at the end of the campaign in court, right? With General Shepard yeah. and Graves. yeah. I, oh, I love that scene. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I love, I loved watching like the, those two just turn on each other yeah. and just the absolute tension in the courtroom and you could feel <laughs> everybody watching just being like, you guys are terrible. <laughs> Trying to save their own skin. <laughs> They're only in it for mm -hmm. themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It felt like, uh, have you ever seen the movie? Um, it's the movie, uh, A Few Good Men where uh, Jack Nicholson says you can't handle the truth. Dang, no, I haven't seen it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, well, it's a it, great movie, but, like, there's that part where, like, where he is, like, questioning Jack Nicholson, and he says that line, you can't handle the truth. It gave mm -hmm. me those vibes where it's, like, you, like, I do what I do because I have to. Like, you can't understand. <laughs> I'm like, that's, it's so, it's so good because you understand why he did what he did, but it's, like, it still doesn't excuse it. Yeah, to quote uh, Shepard himself, sometimes you gotta do bad to do some good. <laughs> but also, to quote Captain Price right after, well, you don't bury your allies in that shit, do you? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, I, I guess, uh, finally, we should talk about the uh, the one that we lose. Ah, yes. The, uh, Our good boy, Soap McTavish. Soap, Soap McTavish. So, so sad. Yeah, I did find it interesting, um, Grav pointed out earlier, he's like, you know, Ghost is kind of a lesser character than Soap, so he's kind of surprised that, like, it would be Soap, but I feel like they've spent a lot of time really fleshing out Ghost in this trilogy, um, as opposed to Soap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, granted, we've really only had, I guess, two games with Ghost, but... I, I, I kind of feel like they... I think that's kind of someone some people's uh, criticism with this campaign, too. Like, how Soap died in it, right? With Without, like, yeah. that much development. But I, I really strongly feel like that's a, the, more of a problem with MW19 and MW2 not including a, a better introduction for Soap. Yeah. I also have to say, too, like, I, I could see maybe somebody saying, like, oh, well, he died so abruptly. But I'm like, that's kind of the point, though. Mm -hmm. Like, the point is, is it's like... It's not glamorous. Like, what, like, did you want him to just go out in, like, a blaze of glory? It's like, no, man. It's like, Makarov just comes up and, while you're trying to... Like, could you think of a better way, though? Like, you're trying to undo... Like, you have Makarov by the balls, basically. And you're yeah. trying to undo his, like, last-ditch effort. His little machine. <laughs> yeah. And his Ma fun Makarov's box. Just like, yeah, he's like, you know what? Because you're going to try and ruin me, I'm going to make you pay for it. Eddie, oh, dude! Soap is the foreshadowing, soap though. Is the consequence. Yeah. Did you notice like, that is, in the oh, in the in the mission with the stadium? Yes. When soap says, well, interacted we'll with McTavish or not McTavish, uh, Macroff? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. When he goes, we'll, we'll see each other again. In, yeah, in because time. because uh, soap was the one who was like, like uh, well, I guess Macroff exploded the airport, right? And soap got mad, like real mad at him, and he like threw him to the ground. Price told him to get off, like, they have him detained, and then uh, Macro was like, oh, I'll get you for that. And, like, he did. Uh -huh. <laughs> he did? Yeah, well, and that's the thing, too, like, when that, I think that's the thing that confuses me, is, like, this campaign is so, like, it's so well-structured with that stuff, that, like, I love how intertwined me. it is. Yeah, like, the fact that you're able to pick up on so much of this in a Call of Duty campaign, yeah, I like, couldn't even say that for the previous two Modern Warfare campaigns. Like, <laughs> no, the characters no, were just like, so well done. It was yeah, this is like the webs were in place for this campaign, and I, I really like that. Yeah, I mean, I literally, I I'm not like even trying to come at this as like a contrarian thing. I literally yeah. just feel like people are off. Like something, some whatever <laughs> hit with this campaign. I just want to know like. 
what hit different for people that makes them feel this way because like if it's the mission structure you know may maybe i could understand that for the mm -hmm. open parts mm -hmm. but like outside of that how how so low like that's also what i'm asking i'm just like well yes. i guess they if they didn't like it it would be just average for them but they're like no this is the worst call of duty campaign ever and i'm just i, I just don't understand that that's the thing I don't get either is like so I actually did want to pull up now that we're uh, uh, we'll make this like the last thing if you want okay thank you <laughs> um yeah yeah no problem <laughs> I I pulled up so the person that reviewed it for IGN Let me just... they ranked the Call of Duty campaigns for IGN oh um, okay I, I thought this was interesting to kind of oh, get God. <laughs> in their head yeah I thought this was interesting to get into their head um, so I, I'm not familiar with all the campaigns cause I haven't played all oh, shoot. of them. One sec. But, uh, oh yeah. Okay. There we go. Uh, so I'm not familiar with all the campaigns, but I know the ones that are like the most popular. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but black ops one and two, mm -hmm. uh, obviously modern warfare one and two classics. Um, I know world at war is kind of an underrated one. And then I know there's a lot of love for both advanced warfare oh wait infinite warfare is not on here what the heck i just realized that screen is a little they bit blurry for this me, pro but... oh sorry about that is that any better mm, no i think it's just the discord's bit right it's just not very good right now i don't know why like when you keep it frozen usually the bit rate gets better but it's not it's weird yeah so they've but so there are if you want to just read it off it... for me that'd be good yeah i'll read it off for you so they've got listed number one and two we've got the first one being modern warfare and then number two is modern warfare 2. the original uh, i think that's that's safe you know I, I get that yeah um number three they have listed call of duty 2. okay i never played that one no i but i've never heard anybody say that the campaigns for like those original ones were so amazing yeah they would go in like the top echelon same and then um, we got World at War, MW19. World at War. Yep. So Number World at War, I know, is really good. Duty. Sorry, uh, uh, World at War, I've heard, is really good. Um, I haven't played it, but MW19, it was pretty good. Then we have... Number six is the original Call of Duty. Okay. Um, Never played Number it. seven is <laughs> Cold War. Interesting. We don't, this is the first Black Ops game we have on here, by the way. No, <laughs> no, no, oh god. That's awful. Yeah, that's the <laughs> oh, first. How? Like, like, for 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 starters, the main character is silent. <laughs> Secondly, they they kind of they butchered Woods a little bit. Like, I a goddamn onion mason. Like, no, <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> yeah, I just. Oh, my wife says dinner will be ready in like ten. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, let's make this fast then. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I I don't understand that because Black Ops One and Two are like way under Cold War, which is strange. Uh, number eight is Modern Warfare Three. Okay. Um, that feels about right. I would. Think. Yeah, it's pretty good. I thought. Um, yeah, Black Ops is number nine. Black Ops for I, me would be like number two. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I thought. Like most people love Black Ops. Like it's in their top five almost always. Um. They put World War Two at number ten. That is so. Meaning odd. that World War Two is above Black Ops Two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. Uh, okay. The original uh, Call, Call of Duty. Of, Call of Duty Three as number eleven. Then Black Ops Two at number twelve. Mm -hmm. Uh, thirteen is Call of Duty Vanguard. <laughs> right uh, beside Black Ops Two. Oh no. Uh, I, I can't believe that okay then you've got modern warfare 2 mm. uh then you've like this yes, 2022 then you've got advanced warfare oh that's so wrong then you've, <laughs> then you've got ghosts okay and then you've got uh this year's modern warfare 3 <sighs> and there's no infinite warfare on here at all that is that's blasphemy <laughs> yeah that's like what is that so like for me personally, let's just go through this real quick. I'd probably put near the top. We got I'd put MW3, Advanced Warfare, uh, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 1, MW3, uh, maybe MW19, and then 
I, I think a lot of the rest are pretty average. The worst like ones... Kind of sift in and out. Yeah, like good to average. And then the, the mm. bad ones, I would say, are probably Ghosts, which I think is accurate. Um, Vanguard and Black Ops 3. I, I don't think Black Ops 3 is on here either. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Black Ops 3 isn't on here either. What the hell? <laughs> I knew we were missing another one because I was like, dude, we got 20 years of Call of Duty and we're missing like... Yeah. We're missing like, what, three games? <laughs> IGN Zota Touch. <laughs> Let's just say that. Uh, very much so. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, they gave this a 4 out of 10, which is the same score that they gave Shit. to Gollum this year. <laughs> um, no. And um. their summary of it was underbaked, rehashed, and cobbled together from multiplayer parts. Uh -oh. uh, Modern Warfare 3 single player campaign is everything a Call of Duty story mode shouldn't be. Okay, first of all, multiplayer parts is wrong. They, what they should be saying is Warzone parts, if they want to be somewhat accurate. Because mm -hmm. we don't know if the campaign was made before Warzone or not yet. None of yeah, it was from multiplayer would, parts. How would they know if they haven't played the multiplayer yet? Yeah, I mean, well, maybe. I mean, what, yeah, what would maybe. they be talking about? Like shared weapons? Like Call of Duty's always done that. What do you mean? Well, that—that's the other thing too. Is it's like they're acting like this is the first time, which mm -hmm. I think is weird. The single player is <laughs> the says everything what you're seeing is be. advanced warfare. <laughs> What we're seeing is advanced reviewing. <laughs> yeah, really. Like, we're taking a real big step back. What do they mean by, like, like underbaked and rehashed? Like, no Russian was original this time. Like, they, they changed it a lot. It was still a terrorist attack, but it was original. Yeah. Well, and what I can't help... So, there is, like, somewhere in this review... If, if you haven't read this review, I would urge you to do it to, for the cringe... Um, <laughs> yeah because there's a there's a part earlier in here where they're like actually trying to compare the state of the like political like like the the basically like the political nature of war with the world and the political nature of the game mm -hmm. and it's really dumb because i don't i don't understand well, like is it like all. culture war stuff or what are we talking uh... about exactly I think it was... Because, uh, I don't know, oh, yeah. I feel they like it's kind about... of a realistic depiction. Well, that's what I thought as well. They think that it's not, um, it's not detailed enough. Which I was like, hmm. didn't, didn't you guys, like, complain that Modern Warfare 2019 was too detailed? How, how much more, like, what kind of detail are they looking for? Exactly. Like, I, I'm a little confused by what it is that they, they want. Mm-hmm. Oh, I also thought it was weird when they said it makes a... F so, they said limited thrills, fairly obvious twists, and nostalgia plays. I would like to know, like, w what were the obvious twists? There weren't many it, twists, were there? No, th there there was... I mean, the only thing I can think of is the post credit scene. That was a good twist, and I did not think that would happen. <laughs> no. With a that, Shepard and only, Price? Uh, like, yeah, that's the only twist I can think of. And uh, I, other than oh. that, I can't really think of any twist. I just, I just I mean, want to say also about that passenger. about that scene, like that characterized Captain Price so damn well. That is the like the best Captain Price I've ever seen, like from the series. Like, like it is. he gives that speech in Modern Warfare 2019 to Gaz about uh, you got to get dirty so the world stays clean, and he actually like does it on his he own does morals just that? and i didn't yeah. think he would do it because like i thought that was too out of character but like no that, like, that just defined him more as a character yeah uh this i absolutely disagree with um they say the ai is uh dumb as bricks they run out of cover with abandon and into the deadly arms of that that, that is a that's a case of playing on recruit mode <laughs> let's be honest <laughs> yes that's uh, the ign friendly mode uh, yeah. um agree with this this next part it's very kind of them to sit absolutely still while you line up sniper shot after sniper shot noticing their friends heads burst around them but doing absolutely nothing to avoid them mm -hmm. uh they absolutely though like if if somebody noticed that their guy got sniped they absolutely go behind cover so i don't understand yeah. that yeah they're like if they're strange. in a certain range around each other they notice <laughs> so yeah. I, I don't know what they're talking about like 
are they talking about the open world mission with the crane? Like, they definitely saw, like, I do, I took sniper shots off from that crane that I talked about earlier in this uh, recording Absolutely. or stream. And they noticed. <laughs> they shot at me. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of them will, like, get behind a car or they'll get behind yeah. a shipping crate or they'll do something. Like, they'll try to run around, like, scatter, like, bugs, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, they're scared. <laughs> but, like, yeah, it's, it's also not, very weird. it's not worse than other Call of Duties. It's better, I think. No. Oh, so okay, so here here's that part I was talking about with the um, with the politics part. So it says it's okay. a shame that the campaign doesn't look to explore the themes further, especially in a time when the issues it takes on are so pre pre prescient. What is this word? Uh, uh oh, dang, the screen's not even. Uh, oh, having or showing knowledge or events before they take place. Having or showing that knowledge of events before they take place. How would? They know. Wait, can you read it again? It seems... Yeah. What was the uh, definition? Having or showing knowledge of events before they take place. So they're saying um, it's trying to predict the future if it were to happen. But it kind of does. Dude, I, I honestly feel like politics are <laughs> in that shitty state right now that it is a very yeah. possible sort of thing that could yeah, happen. Like, as far as I'm <laughs> concerned, everything that happened in this game could very well happen. Yeah. Uh, it says instead Modern Warfare 3 opts to engineer pure shock rather than smartly comment on the morally complex topics it eagerly takes advantage of for entertainment value. I think that's an unfair criticism because the passenger mission alone, I feel, says a lot with saying a little. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would very much disagree with that because I think the passenger mission alone, like you really feel the weight of that situation yes like that, that's a perfect way to put it you feel the weight of yeah. that situation on the rest of the world if that got out if that information got out yeah and the, the way that they talk about the news and the way they talk about the way that it's going to be perceived by other people and the populace and then the fact that you get to see like what happened with that and other events actually like how it affects the world like I don't know. I just really disagree with with the pure shock thing. I don't think they were doing it for shock. I think they actually managed to have pretty good social commentary. The the only one I guess like the only death really that I thought maybe would have been done for shock value instead of like emotional value, right? Is Farah's Farah's friend at the second mission in the game where she gets sniped yeah. out of the car. It's like we we didn't know her and Yeah. She, she died there. That was for shock value, of course, but it wasn't like yes. in your face, like, oh, you should feel sad about this or anything, right? It's like, oh, you should feel a little bit sad for Farah, I guess, because she was upset. <laughs> but like, yeah. it, it wasn't... Well, and also, like, like, if you played 2019, you already know Farah. So the idea that, like, you're, wa like, you got to spend it, like, a good five, six hours with Farah. So now watching work that you did in 2019 try to get corrupted mm -hmm. by Makarov like that's kind of heartbreaking because it's like you fought in 2019 to make Urzik stay in a better place and now you're watching everybody try to like pin stir up the, the, bad guy. the pot again <laughs> yeah I don't know I just I think ultimately like the campaign I think it was really good mm -hmm. um and I think it had a lot of really interesting things to say. Yeah. Which is weird because I, I don't think I've ever said that about a Call of Duty campaign. <laughs> yeah. An interesting comparison I made earlier was that like, not here, but somewhere else was that like, this game does set up Modern Warfare 4 in a good way, I think. Yes. Like better than I think uh, specifically Spider-Verse, like the recent Spider-Verse did uh, across the Spider-Verse. I did not see that. Oh, okay. But I will take your word. <laughs> I will take your word for it. See, like, whereas Spider-Verse, I feel like, does a lot of build-up and references that, like, I don't even get all the references just because there's so many of them and it kind of relies on that for filler, I guess. Yeah. I don't feel like this campaign did that at all. Yeah, I definitely agree. I don't think that, like, I don't feel like it was hamstrung by needing to rehash stuff. I felt like it did a good job of, like, hey, we're going to have our own missions, we're going to have our own themes, we're going to have our own like set pieces and they're going to be a little bit more realistic but they're still going to be yeah they're going to be what we want them to be interestingly enough like soap dies in this version of the universe before ghost right yeah 
and he's yeah. in a way he's kind of like Ghost because he was introduced in MW2 in the original Ghost and he died in MW2. Uh, he wasn't I really a character we bonded parallels. with. It was kind of like that yeah. with here. With, I was with noticing the parallels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like when Shepard shows up and they hand him the gun, I was like, are they going to, are they going, like when we're getting in the chopper, I was like, are they mm -hmm. going to turn this <laughs> oh, into dude. Yeah. the Modern Warfare 2 thing where Shepard is like going to shoot you before you get in? I, and then I, dude, I, I was also calling that out. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Nikolai, let's go. Hold that shepherd in first, please. I don't trust them. <laughs> Drop the pistol. Fuck. I'm scared, guys. I'm scared of this guy. <sighs> I was like, oh shit, yeah, this is was, all too familiar. My... But then it didn't do it. Yes. And I was like, oh, thank God they didn't rehash that. Yeah. Then they flipped it on its head and they're like, we're going to surround shepherd and we are going to make him pay. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's so cool. That was, I, I love that. That like, <laughs> It's such a good moment. Yeah. I think that would be a well, classic. Especially too, because like we're years of jaded Call of Duty fans where we're like, man, I still can't believe Shepard got one over on, you know, 141. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, we finally got to kind of see like Shepard kind of get his. And it was really kind of, it was nice to see. Make him eat his own medicine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, final thoughts for me. I thought it was really great, and I think a lot of the hate is just not very, uh, yeah, I think it's kind of unnecessary, personally. I think a lot of the hate is honestly, like, riding off of first impressions and general, I guess, hate that this game has already received for being, like, on a low sort of development cycle, like a short yeah. development cycle. And they're kind of mm -hmm. just trying to ride off of that to say that this is bad when, like, yeah, you could, like, use those facts, like, that that contributes to it. But at the same time, like, I feel like you're not really taking in the, the substance of the campaign itself into account. Yeah, it, it... like, take, take the state of Activision Blizzard, take, like, the companies that made it, take all that and put it to the side and just, like, play the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> Rate it for what I it is. Like <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that's something that a lot of people have a hard time doing nowadays. It's like they can't just play the game. They have to, like, play the game, but then they also have to comment on it. And then they also have to, like, realize that, oh, we're also, like, you know, are are they going to charge us this much for this and then this and this? And it's like, dude, just, just enjoy the game. Like, just mm -hmm. play it. And if you really didn't like it, if you didn't have any fun with it, okay, you know, that that's, that's fine. But don't just go in and listen to everybody talk about it like form your own opinion yeah see like yeah i, I would still recommend people to wait for this game uh to go on sale like a boxing day it's like what two months away <laughs> um yeah but I like disagree with that at all. Especially uh, more so PC. especially if you've played the multiplayer before like those maps like, i know there's different movement and gunplay and stuff but if you've already played the maps before you may as well wait you can watch the campaign on YouTube if you're kind of debating on getting it or not. And zombies, we haven't seen anything about it yet either, so there's just more reason to wait <laughs> instead of yes. putting blind faith in a pre-order. And we can certainly uh, circle back to the conversation on if the game is worth it uh, with Grav as well. When um, when Zombies comes out, like when the full game releases, right. um, and we've had the weekend or week to play it, I, I think it would be worth revisiting, like, hey, how, how do we feel about it now that we've had a week with it? Or how do we feel now that we've actually got the other two-thirds of the game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. I would be down for that. Yeah. And well, yeah. that's... Overall, I think this yeah. campaign was pretty good, too. I wouldn't say... I wouldn't say any campaign's worth $70, of course. But I think uh, for this being one-third of the game, it is definitely worthy of, like, what, $20, $25? whatever one yep. third is like alone like i think that's good <laughs> yeah and if the other two thirds of the game hold up then yeah it very well might be worth the price yeah campaign's but, not uh, holding it down for we... sure <laughs> yeah absolutely that's why we put our money on the line to tell you so <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh yeah matt thank you for taking the time to talk with me about the campaign I Thank had a you lot too. of feelings, a lot of thoughts, and I just needed to get them off my chest with somebody who understood my plight. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, my dogs are acting up right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm also gonna have to go, but thank you so much too. Uh, yes, thanks for having no me on. Problem, my man. Absolutely. It's been great. I will let you go, but yeah, thank you for coming in and uh, we will reconvene. Yes, sir. When zombies and the multiplayer come out. Yeah, we'll try to do that. Yes. With gravity too. <laughs> yes, 100%. All right, my man. You take care. You too, man. Peace out. <laughs> Bye-bye.